A pleasant good evening and welcome to the Wolverine the Turtle Creek Stadium home of your Woodland Hills Wolverines. I am Adam Gusky to my right is Fred Guy and this evening your Woodland Hills Wolverines take on the Peters Township Indians in a crucial WPIAL Quad A Southeastern Conference matchup. Woodland Hills 5-2 on the year, 5-1 in the Southeastern Conference. The Wolverines have won five straight including a 34-0 victory over Cannon McMillan a week ago. Meanwhile, Peters Township is 4-3 and three on the year, 3-3 three and three in the SEC, and they come off of a 39-35 win against the Mount Lebanon Blue Devils last Friday night. And Fred Guy, this Peters Township team does a couple of things very well. They score points, especially in their four victories. They've scored well over uh, 30 points a game this season. They bring the house defensively, and they're very, very hungry as they're trying to find a playoff spot in the postseason. Yeah, as I was going over their pregame stats um, for Peters Township, it looks like they're scoring about the same as they're giving up. They're giving up 24 points a game, but they're also scoring 24 points a game. So, you know, at, at any point, they can put points on the board. And the quarterback, Owen, is a very nice athlete. He's a dual-threat guy. He can pass. He can run. And he's got a, a, another running back to complement him as well as a nice wide receiver tight end. Three losses on the year this year for Peters Township. Penn Hills, Upper St. Clair, and Bethel Park, and they were shut out by both Bethel Park and Upper St. Clair, which is good news for Woodland Hills because they were able to score some points against Upper St. Clair, and obviously they beat Bethel Park, but the Wolverines cannot sleep this Peters Township team. Like we said, they're strong defensively, and they score points on the offensive end. Yeah, not too many teams that score points against Upper St. Clair, but I mean, they've done a great job against every other opponent that they've, they've faced this year, and you know, if Woodland Hills decides to sleep these guys, you know, Peters Township is going to give them a rude awakening. Donald Cassidy will kick it off as we are underway in Turtle Creek, PA. End over end kick, a low liner that is returned from the 10 yard line for the Peters Township Indians. On the return is Marcus Umbinger, and he is brought down at the 29 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Peters Township Indians. And I was watching Umbinger during pregame warmups. This kid is very electrifying, he's got a ton of speed. And if Woodland Hills doesn't wrap him up early and put some uh, hits on him, he's going to run loose and then, you know, hopefully, you know, well, I, I would say hopefully not get into the end zone against Woodland Hills. Side eye formation behind quarterback Corey Owen, a dual threat. Motion man from right to left. Umminger will take the handoff. He has some room over left, and then he will pick up about four yards to the 33-yard line before being brought down by a pair of Wolverines, Dejon Brown in on the tackle for Woodland Hills. Yeah, good job of Uppinger just being patient and waiting for his fullback, number 57, uh, Gary Watts, to, to clear some room for him. Uh, unfortunately for Woodland Hills, they were able to uh, bottle him up you know, after just a four-yard game. Peters Township taking a while to get that play in as Nicholas Kirsch runs it in from the sideline. Piccanini, Rich Piccanini, the head coach of the Peters Township Indians. Motion man from left to right for the Indians. And off to Uppinger. He has a big hole and off to the races. He will go inside of Woodland Hills territory. And he will finally be brought down at the 40-yard line. Big hole over the left side. And he was able to pick up big yardage. And that's the kind of confidence that Peters Township is going to need early going on early in this game like i said before uppinger is electrified if you give him some space he's going to take advantage of it just like he did on that last play two carries 31 yards marcus uppinger 510 senior for peters township Woodland Hills in their home black uniforms, black jerseys, black pants, turquoise numerals, and the black and turquoise helmets. Hand off again to Ubinger over left side, and he is brought down after a very nice gain of about eight yards to the 32-yard line, and it's second down and two. And right now, Peters Township exploiting the right side of the Woodland Hills defensive front. And you got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line of Peters Township with just pushing back the defensive line of Woodland Hills and their linebackers. They just seem to get a helmet on a helmet. And Uppinger is just, he's being patient. He's waiting for his lanes. But when he sees those lanes, he's hitting them fast. Three carries, 39 yards thus far for Marcus Uppinger. Again, a tight eye formation. Motion man from left to right is Kirsch. Handoff to Uppinger again. And he will drive his way for the Wolverines. 
will stymie that one, but it'll still be a two-yard pickup as Akira McLean makes the tackle, and that should be enough for a first down as Peters Township continues to move the football. And the defense for Wilden Hills looks shell-shocked right now. They really didn't expect to uh, see a good bit of Uppinger this early in the ball game, but you know Uppinger is just going to um, actually not Uppinger, but the whole Peters Township offensive is just doing a good job of executing their game plan. Wolverines allowing 41 yards thus far on this drive. A week ago, the Wolverines allowed minus 36 yards rushing. So a big difference, and a flag will come in. I think Peters Township is going to be guilty of a delay of game. Checking with our referee. Dead ball, delay game, offense. It means there isn't one. <laughs> uh, anyhow, you may have heard one of the offensive linemen saying we can't see the play clock. That's because there isn't one, and a lot of high schools don't have them. I mean, there are several high schools around the WPIL that don't have them. Peters Township may be accustomed to having one because they have one at their stadium. But that five-yard penalty is going to cost them five yards back to the 35 where it's first and 15. Owen under center. Hand off to Ubbinger again. This time the Wolverines are all over it. Penetration by Eggleston. And also in the tackle for the Wolverines is Jordan Lee. A loss of two brings up second down and 17. And that was kind of surprising that, uh, you know, Peters Township has had such success to their left side, the Woodland Hills defensive right side, because you got James, big James Eggleston on that side, um, along with the Kara McLean. That time, Devin, uh, I'm sorry, Jordan Lee and Eggleston just had a good push, a big push against that offensive line to get up and air into the backfield. Eggleston did a terrific job of shedding the center to make that play two yards deep. 8.43 to go in this scoreless first quarter. Owen bobbles the football and is brought down by James Eggleston. A loss of three on the play, and that's two straight plays for the big defensive lineman in the backfield. Well, what they've done, what Willen Hills has done is put Eggleston over the center as opposed to putting him over the uh, guard or tackle. And Eggleston is just taking that center to town and did a great job of, like you said, shedding his, shedding his blocker and getting Owen in the backfield for a second consecutive loss. And the center that time had a tough time getting that shotgun snap back. Lucas Cervanic had a tough time getting that one back, and Owen had a tough time corralling it. After that loss of three, it is third down and 20 for Peters Township at the Woodland Hills 40. Owen under center. And all kinds of movement. Both backs moved. The receiver along the near side, Timothy Swoop, moved as well. Dead ball. False start offense. Third down. So after Peters Township drove the ball to the Woodland Hills 30-yard line, two consecutive losses and a couple of penalties have pushed the Indians all the way back to their own 40 or to the Woodland Hills 45. And it looks like Peters Township has grown accustomed to uh, the play clock being shown on the field. I mean, all of the schools that we've gone to in the South Hills seem to have a play clock, so that might be a, a big advantage for Woodland Hills in this game. Owen straight drop back, looks to his right, and it will be intercepted by Trayvon Mathis along that far sideline, and Fred, from our angle, it looked like Owen was throwing that ball to Trayvon Mathis. Yeah, Trayvon Mathis was actually waiting for that ball to come in. The, the receiver on that play, uh, Michael Ehrenberg, um, had actually a play on it, but it looks like he either overran it or just missed it, and that ball fell right into the arms of Trayvon Mathis. Let's take a look at this on the television replay. It's Owen dropped back, a quick three-step drop. It was a timing pattern, and it looked like Trayvon Mathis was playing the ball the whole way, and you're right, the receiver had a beat on the football at the last moment, but Mathis made the play, and it's Woodland Hills' ball at their own 18. Scoreless here in the first quarter with 7.33 to go. Pistol formation, handoff to Art Tompkins, bouncing it to the near side, now on the cutback. There goes Art Tompkins, back to the line of scrimmage and a little bit beyond to the 20-yard line. And uh, Art Tompkins there made chicken salad out of you-know-what, picking up two yards where there was nothing. Yeah, Art Tompkins is actually filling in for Miles Sanders, who's out this week with an injury. But actually, Art did a great job of just getting himself a good two-yard gain because he was caught in the backfield, put on the brakes, saw a nice lane, was able to get himself at least some positive yardage out of that. Second down and eight for the Wolverines. Randall back in at quarterback after sitting out a week ago. Handoff. Tompkins straight up the middle, and he will be brought down for a four-yard gain to the 24-yard line, and that will bring up third down and four for Woodland Hills 
at their own 24. Yeah, I'm not sure if you know the size difference between Art Tompkins and Miles Sanders is playing an issue right now with Harry Randall because it looks like he's actually taking those handoffs, uh, giving those handoffs a little bit high to Art Tompkins. Um, he's putting them in his chest instead of in his belly, so let's just hope that doesn't become an issue later on in this game. Tompkins 5'9", Sanders 6 feet tall. Pistol again. Randall's going to keep it this time on the quarterback draw, and Peters Township looked like they saw that one coming from a mile away. It'll be a pickup of one for Randall, and the punt unit comes on for the Wolverines. Woodland Hills not able to take advantage on the takeaway by Trayvon Mathis. Third down and, or fourth down and three for Woodland Hills with the ball at their own 25. And this is really good to see Harry Randall taking a play um, and, you know, running, running up the field, getting used to being in the game after being out last week. Our Tompkins will punt this one away. Not the most beautiful punt, but it takes a nice Woodland Hills bounce and will bounce out of bounds at the Woodland Hills 49-yard line. A net punt of just 24 yards, but it could have been a lot worse had Peters Township been closer to the football. Yeah, with Harry Randall coming off an injury, uh, I didn't see Dante Broaddus dressed for the game. Willen Hills is with their third punter now. Not that Art is going to do a good job or hasn't done a good job, but he's just not used to being back there. He's not used to handling snaps. Um, so this first, hopefully this first punt was just a jitter, just uh, you know, jitters for Art. Owen will step under center with a tight eye backfield behind him, tight end to either side, and two receivers to the right. Hand off. Will go to the tailback. This time it's Mark Minjock. And Minjock is brought down a yard deep in the backfield. Loss of one brings up second down and 11. We saw a heavy dose of Minjock a year ago. But Marcus Ubinger has taken the reins in the starting lineup, at least thus far this year, for Peters Township. Adam, I do believe that was his brother, Mike Minjock. Oh, that you may be right. <laughs> You're right, it was. There were two Minjocks last year. The brothers Minjock. Second and 11. High backfield. And off again will go to Minjock. He will pick up about a yard. Looked like the ball had squared it loose, but Minjock fell on top of it. And again, it's James Eggleston making the tackle. And Fred, after the first three plays offensively for Peters Township, it has been the James Eggleston show defensively for the Wolverines. Yeah, he's just done a great job of just shedding his center, uh, and shedding any blocker, actually, getting, getting into the backfield of Peters Township. But I'm kind of surprised that they've gone to Minjock. Um, in this second series, you know, considering that Uppinger had such great success first three, four plays of the first series. Beautiful, cool fall night here in western Pennsylvania for high school football. 63 to, or 53 degrees at the time of kickoff. Owen under center. He will roll to his right hand, side step up into the pocket, and he was across the line of scrimmage when he threw that football, but the officials were not there to see it, and it passes complete to Timothy Swoop down at the 10 yard, 20 yard line. And that is a pickup of 28 yards. But Fred, I swear to you that that, at least from our angle, looked like Corey Owen was beyond the line of scrimmage. And you can tell the uh, uh, coaches for Woolen Hills are extremely upset because they also felt like he was across the line of scrimmage as well. So a pickup of 28 on that play. And it's first and 10 for the Peters Township Indians at the Woodland Hills 20-yard line. Just under four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Owen, tight eye backfield, handoff. Minjock has a hole in. He will drive his way forward to the 15-yard line, batted around hard by some Wolverines, and Minjock is brought down. Tackle on the play for the Wolverines, Jihad Brown, and it is second down and five. And Peters Township does have an effective uh, place kicker as well. Saw him warming up. Looked like he could bag from 35, 45 yards. So, uh, you know, this would be a chip shot for him if, you know, Willen Hills can come up and make a big stop. Single back formation behind Owen. Two receivers to the far boundary right. And the motion. The full back from left to right. Hand off to Minjock. And he will pick up about four yards before being battered around and brought down. Chris David amongst others in there on the tackle for Woodland Hills. And it's third down and one. 
And the Wolverines are going to bring their jumbo package in defensively. Yeah, we've seen this situation from Woodland Hills time after time. They get deep, they bend, but you know, Woodland Hills has a habit of not breaking. So let's just see if they can keep that mentality and that focus going into this next play. So again, it's third down and one for the Peters Township Indians. The ball at the Woodland Hills 11-yard line. Scoreless here in the first quarter. Fullback crabbing from left to right. Handoff, Minjock. He is close to first down yardage. He'll squeak through after being met initially at the line of scrimmage. And it's a pickup of three to the eight-yard line, first and goal for Peters Township. And, it was, and they just ran the exact same play they did the, the play before. They brought uh, the fullback from left to right as a lead blocker, found, some, found a good opening and got himself a first down. 2.22 and rolling here in the first quarter. Again, we're scoreless, but Peters Township threatening. Deep inside of Woodland Hills territory for the second time today. Tie-dye backfield. And off will go to Minjock, and he is met in the backfield. Run blitz by Deshaun Osbrooks, and he brought Minjock down at the 10-yard line for a loss of two. And Deshaun Osbrooks has done that all season long. He's been, he's actually perfected the art of the run blitz because he seems to be in the backfield any time that he's on a run blitz and they're try, uh, the opponent's trying to run the ball. He just makes this nice stick in the backfield. Peters Township breaking the huddle. Greg Watts, the fullback. The tailback is still Minjock. Owen, straight drop back. Looks to his left, throws to his left. He will find a receiver in Michael Ehrenberg. And Ehrenberg is brought down inside of the five at the three-yard line. A pickup of seven on that one. And it is third down and goal at the three. Adam, I didn't see who had the coverage on that, but he, whoever did made an excellent tackle. Once that ball was caught, it looks like... You know, the defender was right on his back and actually shielded him from getting into the end zone. It looks like it was Chris Davis. Timeout, Peters Township. So the Indians take a timeout, and we will too. With 105 to play in a scoreless first quarter, you tune into the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Play in the first quarter. Peters Township with the football, third and goal at the Woodland Hills three. Handoff, Minjock met in the backfield. And it's James Eggleston again making the tackle in the Peters Township backfield. Fred, we've seen Eggleston make plays this season, but he is on a different planet this afternoon. Yeah, these last four or five plays have been the James Eggleston show because he just keeps showing up in the backfield of Peters Township play after play after play. And Peters Township is going to attempt a 22-yard field goal. Sean Harrison, the place kicker. This will be a straight on kick. Snap good, kick up, and that kick wasn't pretty, but it is good. And with 25 seconds to go in the first quarter, Peters Township breaks a scoreless tie. It is the Indians three and the Wolverines zero. And you're tuned into Woodland Hills and Peters Township on the Woodland Hills Football Network. To the Wolverina where Woodland Hills trails Peters Township 3-0. to zero. The Wolverines bending but not breaking. Peters Township on a nice field goal drive that started the Woodland Hills 49, drove all the way to the Woodland Hills 3, but the Indians were forced to settle for a Sean Harrison 22-yard field goal. And Harrison now on to kick it away. He'll get underneath this one. End over end kick that will be returned by the Wolverines. Chris David from his own 17 yard line. David finds a hold of the far sideline. 30, 40, to the 50. Still on his feet on the cutback inside of Peters Township territory. 30, 25, still on his feet to the 20 and brought down at the 17 yard line. And Chris David with a rare kickoff return made it count. He certainly did. Out of we, we expect that from Chris David because he's made a lot of big plays defensively for this Willow Hills team. But he just does a great job doing anything that the coach has asked him to do, especially on that last play with the kick return. He followed Harry Randall out as his lead blocker. Harry Randall did a great job of picking up a nice block. And the Woodland Hills, that's what we expect. Them to start, them to, to have something like a field goal come down, very next play, turn an electrifying uh, kickoff return into something positive. 66-yard kick return for Chris David, and it's first and 10 for Woodland Hills at the Peters Township 17. 11 seconds to go in the first quarter. Quarterback draw for Harry Randall. He'll squeak his way forward. 
across the line of scrimmage, and he'll be brought down at the 15-yard line. And that was a great read by Harry Randall. He saw that the uh, defensive line, the left uh, defensive end, came up field a little bit fast, faked the handoff to Art Tompkins, found a couple yards, and like we said, we, Harry Randall needs to get the confidence back after being out with injury last week. Final play of the first quarter. Woodland Hills trailing Peters Township 3-0, but the Wolverines deep inside of Indian Territory. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Indians on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. And we welcome you back to the Wolverine. Adam Gusky, Fred Guy on the call for you all across the Woodland Hills Football Network. It's 3-0 Woodland Hills trailing Peters Township, but the Wolverines threatening deep inside of Indian Territory. And Fred, right now, the Woodland Hills offense has moved the ball a little bit, but what I'm surprised about is how well Peters Township is moving the football. Yeah, they're executing their game plan to perfection. Um, they're just taking, the, they're taking their blocking assignments and just doing everything they need to do with them. And all kinds of movement. There was a wide open receiver along that far sideline. And that was Mike Smith who lined out as a split end way to that far side. But the Wolverines moved early. So did the Indians. And uh, some finger pointing going on out there. The Wolverines say that the Indians moved first. And we'll check in with our referee to see officially. Dead ball, full start offense. Woodland Hills Still doesn't like down. the call. But it will cost the Wolverines five yards. And instead of second down and eight from the 15, it'll be... Second down and 13 from the 20. Yeah, I'm surprised Harry Randall didn't see that wide open wide receiver a little bit faster. I mean, all you had to do was just throw, throw a soft pass out there, and uh, Smith would have been in the end zone because there was nobody near him. Randall handoff. Tompkins bouncing it to the outside. He has the end zone if he can turn the corner. Inside of the 10, inside of the 5, and into the end zone. He will go for the Woodland Hills touchdown. The Wolverines are up 6-3 with 11.53 to play in the second quarter. Yeah, Art Tompkins made that play look very easy. He just took the, took the ball from Randall, didn't see anything up the middle, bounced it outside, and when Art Tompkins gets outside, it's almost impossible to stop him. But he picked up some nice blocks from the wide receivers and downfield as well. And Fred, we talked about it last week. It's possible that Art Tompkins is the fastest Wolverine. Yeah, he, he can get down the field very quick. Cassidy on for the PAT, and it will squeak over the crossbar and inside of the right upright. Randall had trouble with the hole, but as long as it goes between the uprights and over the crossbar, it counts. And with 11.53 to play in the second quarter, it's Woodland Hills 7 and Peters Township 3. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Indians all across the Woodland Hills Football Network. Second quarter, Woodland Hill steps out on top, 7-3 on a 20-yard touchdown run by Art Tompkins. And last week, State Senator Jay Costa, player of the game, making his presence known here in his first start at tailback. Yeah, like as we're looking at the replay, nothing up the middle, got a nice kick out block, or seal block by Joe Elshaw, picked up a nice block downfield by, by, I believe, Chris David. And once you get two blocks, and Art Tompkins with his speed, he's going to find himself in the end zone. The Cassidy on to kick it away. For the Wolverines, setting the ball near the right hash at his home 40-yard line. Cassidy, end over and kick, will carry down to the 10-yard line. Peters Township on the return down that far boundary, and the Wolverines bringing down the return man, Nicholas Kirsch, at the 29-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Peters Township Indians from that 29. You know, Adam, I keep looking at the sideline for Peters Township, and I do not see number 24. Um, Marcus Ubinger has been basically the offense for Peters Township. On that first drive, he was able to pick up a, a good amount of yards uh, following some nice blocking on his offensive line and fullback. I don't see him in the game right now. High backfield behind Owen. Hard count for Owen. And whistles blowing, flags fly. Woodland Hills may have encroached the neutral zone. Let's check in with our referee, and I'll give you some news about Ubinger in a minute. Dead ball, false start offense. First down. So that five-yard penalty will back up the Indians to their own 24-yard line. And Fred, uh, after the second possession for Peters Township, we saw Ubinger 
with ice on his shoulder. Folks on the TV side were able to see it momentarily. Ubinger with ice on his shoulder was headed to the Peters Township locker room. He must, he must have took a, a nice shot from one of the defenders with Woodland Hills. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if it was James Eggleston because he has shined thus far. Owen on the quarterback draw. And he will pick up a couple of yards up to the 27-yard line. A pickup of three, and it is second down and 12. You know, and we talked about Deshaun Osbrook's run blitz. Um, the, play, the previous play looked like he was going for a run blitz and might have actually drawn the offensive lineman off guard or, you know, as a, a procedure penalty. Um, Deshaun Osbrook has done a, just a great job of you know, mixing up everything and being an unsung leader on this team. Owen oh, again on a designed run coming to the near side right. He will be hit and he will be brought down again by James Eggleston. Owen was slowed down in the backfield by a Woodland Hills linebacker. Making the initial pressure was Malik Flowers, but the tackle is made by James Eggleston. A loss of two on the play, and it is third down and 14. Got to give a little bit of credit to Akira McLean, too, because he was in with Eggleston on that tackle. But it is just good to see Eggleston, as big as he is, he has a tremendous motor and just gets after the quarterback relentlessly. And I saw Akira McLean on the TV replay. He hurdled in one of his own teammates and helped make the play from behind. Ball carrier this time is Minjock, and Minjock will pick up about four yards to the 29-yard line before being brought down, and the punt unit will come on for Peters Township. Minjock took a nice hit. I couldn't see which Woodland Hills defender was able to hit him, but Minjock got up a little slow, and it looks like he's a little woozy as he's coming to the sideline. Let's take a look on this TV replay. Minjog, yeah, he got hit, uh, took a shoulder to the face mask by Jihad Brown. Snap a little high, and Peters Township will boot this away. A nice punt there for Ehrenberg. It'll be picked up by Harry Randall. Randall still on his feet as he crosses the 45, cutting it back inside of Peters Township territory, inside of the 50 to the 45-yard line. And Harry Houdini... As we've called him before, makes a nice play there, and it's first and 10 for Woodland Hills at the Peters Township 45-yard line. And for the second time, the Wolverines take over inside of Indian Territory. A good job of Harry Randall tracking that ball down, getting his feet set, surveying the field. Found a little crease, uh, took some hits, got some nice blocking, but uh, Harry Randall made a lot of people miss on that play. And just by the grace of he was able to keep that ball under wraps because it looked like he was handling it a little bit away from his body. Jeremiah Jones in at quarterback now as the handoff will go to Joel Shaw. Shaw with a pickup Joel of six. And it's second down and four. And I'm not sure if Randall was shaken up or if we're just going to see some more of Jeremiah Jones after a fantastic performance a week ago. Yeah, I, I think uh, Harry Randall was actually shaken up on that last play. He looked like he came off the field uh, limping a little bit, so let's just hope it's not a, uh, you know, a long, long effect injury. Two receivers to either side, quarterback draw. Jeremiah Jones fighting for more yardage, and it'll be enough for the first down as he carries it from his own 44 to the, or his own 38 rather, to the 34, a pickup of about four yards, and it is first and 10 for the Wolverines. And that was an interesting run by Jones because he was hit at least three times, and you know, with his second effort, was able to get Willen Hills a first down. So actually a gain of six for Jeremiah Jones as they place that ball at the 33. Jones with the receiver to either side, hand off to Joel Shaw. He'll lower his shoulders, driving his way forward, dragging an Indian with him. And Joel Shaw will be brought down just shy of the 25 yard line and going for a ride was a Peters Township linebacker. Cody Sheets was number 39 who uh, took a ride on the Joel Shaw Express. Pickup of six for Shaw, two carries a dozen yards for the sophomore fullback. Seven 
Jeremiah Jones, shotgun formation, trips left, one receiver to the far side right. Hard count by Jones, hand off to Shaw. Shaw on the cutback. Inside of the 20 to the 15, still on his feet to the 13 yard line. And Joel Shaw tweaked an ankle on Wednesday in practice, but he sure isn't showing any ill effects of that right now. No, he's not, because one Indian defender tried to get him by his ankles. That's not going to work. You know, when you get when jo Joel Shaw gets running, you need three or four bodies to uh, hit him to get him down, because he's going to run through you or over you or around you. Um, ankle tackles and body shots aren't going to work on him. Two receivers to either side. Shaw next to Jones. Motion man from right to left. Snap goes high. Jones will track it down. He'll retreat and will be brought down at the 25-yard line. And Cody Sheets stands over Jeremiah Jones and gives him a little bit of an earful after making the play in the Woodland Hills backfield. Well, Sheets got a lot of nerve after going a, on a run on the Joel Shaw train just two plays ago. Anything that's going to get himself back into this ball game after taking a ride by Shaw. If that's what he has to do, then that's what he has to do. It was an errant snap. Uh, you know, I wasn't sure if uh, Jones was ready for the, the snap, but uh, you know, in this situation, you're still second down. you got a long way to go to get a first down. You still can get a first down without getting a touchdown. So let's see what Willem Hills can do on this play. Two receivers to either side. Shaw to the right of Jones. Jones in the shotgun, straight drop back. He'll step up into the pocket, looks down the middle, looking for Trayvon Mathis. And Mathis says his face mask was grabbed on the way up, but the officials don't see it. Marshall McClure on the coverage for Peters Township, and it is third down and 20 from the 24. And you can tell Jones is a pure passer because he was able, got tremendous protection from his offensive line, had tremendous amount of time to survey the field, started to look right, came back to his left, saw that Mathis was one-on-one -on -one and had to step on his guy. And, you know, in my opinion, Mathis probably should have had that ball laid in the end zone. I'll agree with you there. So third down and 20, ball at the 24. Shaw in the shotgun, or rather uh, Jones in the shotgun with a shot to his left. Jones. Looking left, throwing left for Trayvon Mathis in double coverage, and it's a Woodland Hills touchdown! <laughs> Mathis with a beautiful catch in double coverage, leaning back, falling down and grabbing a hold. And again, it's Jeremiah Jones to the rescue for the Black and Turquoise. That was a great throw by Jeremiah Jones. Number four from Pierce Township, Marshall McClure had press coverage on Trayvon Mathis. Trayvon put a, just a nice move on him and got himself wide open. He had some safety help, but Trayvon made a great catch in the back of the end zone. Cassidy on to attempt the PAT. The holder is Randall. The snap is high, the hold is down, and that kick is good. And with six minutes and 24 seconds to play in the second quarter, it is Woodland Hills 14 in Peters Township 3. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Second consecutive week, Jeremiah Jones. His first completed pass is a touchdown. This week, it's a 24-yarder to Trayvon Mathis. And it was a beauty. And again, it was into what could be considered double coverage, but the pass was right on the money. And Trayvon Mathis did a nice job of concentrating on the football. Knew he was going to get hit, but hung on to it for the Woodland Hills touchdown. Yeah, I thought the safety on that play probably could have batted that ball away, but it looked like he went from the ball site to Trayvon Mathis, and then once Trayvon Mathis got his hands on it, he pulled it in and made a nice catch. Cassidy booms it away. Kachowski on the return of the squib. And Kachowski will surge to the 36 before being driven back. And it will be first and 10 for the Indians from their own 36. And, and Willow Hills is actually, they did a really good job on that last offensive or last defensive stand um, of, of really just disrupting the offensive rhythm that Peters Township had. Well, Trayvon Mathis today, a touchdown reception to go along with an interception. We've seen James Eggleston all over the field, and Art Tompkins is doing what he did last week. Now the Wolverines clicking on all cylinders after a rocky start. Handoff will go to Minjock. He'll get just past the line of scrimmage, and again, it's James Eggleston on the tackle. Helping out was Jahad Brown. 
I mean, we can see the difference between Menjok and Uppinger. I mean, Uppinger is just quick, very fast, um, has great vision. That's one thing that we really didn't expect him coming into this game is the vision that he had because he was finding holes and explaining them. Menjok is probably a step slower and really doesn't have the, the vision that Uppinger is because right now he's just not seeing the holes, and Woolen Hills is doing a great job of just sealing everything up. Owen. Happy feet as he drops back. He'll run to his right-hand side. Steps up, throws. The pass is low, and it will be incomplete. Timothy Swoop trying to convince the official that he came up with it, but it certainly hit the artificial surface around the 42-yard line before he got his arms underneath it, and that will bring up third down and nine. Yeah, we can hear it up here from the field, Mike. That ball hit the turf before it got to Swoop. So third down and nine for the Peters Township Indians. Peters Township looking to find their way into the WPIAL playoffs, while Woodland Hills has already clinched a playoff spot and is looking to secure home field for week one. High backfield behind Owen. Minjok the tailback. Hard count by Owen and some movement. And I believe the receiver on the near side, Timothy Swoop, moved early. Dead ball, encroachment defense, third down. Oh, that was a tough call because uh, we saw some movement by Timothy Swoop, and Mike Nash was pointing right at Swoop, but instead it will go against the Wolverines, costing them five yards. And Swoop moved right in front of the side judge. I don't know why they didn't call that on Swoop. And off will go to Minjok. He has a hole into Woodland Hills territory and a touchdown saving catch by, Mal or tackle rather, by Malik Flowers. And it is first and 10 for Peters Township at the Woodland Hills 42 yard line. I guess I stand corrected on the speed of uh, Mike Minjok. Just did a great job of, you know, the, the left side of the offensive line for Peters Township did a great job of opening up a big hole. Um, that, I mean, Eggleston, and a couple other uh, defenders just really missed him. He exploited and got himself a first down. High formation behind Owen. Woodland Hill shows blitz. Owen off of play action, rolls to his right. He will throw to his right, and that pass is incomplete. Chris David had a beat on the football, but Derek Bachanchi should have come up with that one most likely. And it will be second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Well, he's probably better served not catching that pass because uh, Chris David had a, like you said, a beat on him. And he had him in the crosshairs because if he had caught it, Chris David would have just lit him up. Second down and 10 for Woodland Hill, or for rather for Peters Township at the Woodland Hills 42 clock stop with just over five minutes to go in the second quarter. Shotgun formation, sidecars to either side of Owen, motion man from left to right. The setback next to Owen moved early, and then Owen on the quarterback draw will be brought down after a pickup of about three. But Fred, from our vantage point, and folks in the press box will concur that Gregory Watts moved a bit early. Yeah, I don't know if that was a designed uh, quarterback draw, because it looks like number seven, uh, Swoop, was coming in motion, and it looked like Owen was about to throw it to him until we saw Chris David come up and, uh, you know, was going to make a play on it, but Owen just tucked the ball and ran. So that brings up third down and seven for Peters Township. The ball at the Woodland Hills 39-yard line. Owen with an eye backfield behind him, receivers to either side. Owen straight drop back, looks to his right, throws to his right, and it is, oh, nearly intercepted. Mike Nash had his hands on it, but couldn't hang on to the football, and the incomplete pass brings up fourth down and seven with the ball at the Woodland Hills 39. And Mike Nash made an excellent read on that ball. It was just a three-step post route, and Mike Nash just stepped in front of it, and his momentum, if he would have caught it, was carrying him towards the offensive line, but uh, under normal circumstances, if he would have caught that cleanly, probably would have been, you know, it would have picked six. Michael Ehrenberg, 6'2", receiver, also the punter for Peters Township. And back deep to return for Woodland Hills will be Chris David. The Indians will go with a fake instead. One of the up men on the 
fake, and he will run all the way into the end zone for a Peters Township touchdown. Woodland Hills didn't see it coming, and Cody Sheets rumbles 39 yards for the Peters Township TD, and it's a five-point game with the PAT on the way. And that's a gutsy call by the head coach of Peters Township. You know, you're down, you know, what, 11 points on the road. It was a great, it was a great call. A couple missed tackles, but Cody Sheets was able to elude a couple of Woodland Hills defenders and get himself into the end zone. Sheets was one of the upbacks. It was nice downfield blocking by Peters Township to ultimately spring Sheets inside the 15. The AT is up, and that is no good wide right. And a flag will come in late after the play is over. And with 4.04 to play in the second quarter, it's Woodland Hills 14 and Peters Township 9. And we'll have to see what these flags are about when we return. Again, with 4.04 to play in the second quarter, it's Woodland Hills 14 and Peters Township 9. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. And while, and while we were away, the official gave us the signal on the penalty on the point after touchdown attempt by Peters Township, and it was a personal foul against the Wolverines. So the Indians will be kicking off from the Woodland Hills 45 yard line. The score is 14 to nine, Peters Township trailing our Woodland Hills Wolverines. The Indians scoring on a 39 yard fake punt run by Cody Sheets. It looks like Woodland Hills just fell asleep uh, you know, on that last play. They, they were looking to get the ball back and try to put some points on the board before going into halftime. But like we said, Peters Township did a great job of you know, throwing some trick plays at Woodland Hill. They weren't expecting it and they took advantage of it. PAT was no good by Sean Harrison. Like we said, a penalty at the end of the PAT. And Peters Township kicking off from Woodland Hills 45. Harrison will angle this kick to the near sideline into the Peters Township cheerleaders. And it will be Woodland Hills football at their own 35-yard line. That'll be a net kick of 10 yards, Fred. I don't understand why he would try to go that direction or even near the sideline. You put that right down the middle of the field, you should be able to kick it 40, 45 yards into the Woodland Hills end zone, have them start at their own 20 instead of their own 35. Illegal procedure, kick out of bounds is 25 yards from the kick. Spot the ball in the 20 yard line. First Actually, down. it's not a, a bad strategy now that I think about it. Um, kicking the ball out of bounds is 25 yards from the kick. It's not automatically at the 35 yard line. So, had First Peters Township kicked Hill off from the 40 yard line, it would have been the Woodland Hills 35. But instead, since they kicked off from the Woodland Hills 45, it goes to the Woodland Hills 20. So, it's as good as a touchback. Essentially, yes. <laughs> So again, the score is 14 to nine. And now Harry Randall back in at quarterback, trying to spring it to the outside. Eludes one tackler across the 25 to the 30 yard line and he will be hit just as he crosses the boundary to the far sideline. A pickup of 11 for Harry Randall. And it is first and 10 for the Wolverines. Yeah, good job of Harry Randall of uh, getting through the one tackler for Peters Township. Uh, just pulled away from him. And once he got to the sideline, he got himself just enough for the first down. Third carry of the day for Harry Randall. Three carries and 14 yards for the senior QB. Jeremiah Jones ran the last offensive set for the Wolverine. Trips to the left. Joel Shaw, the sidecar to the right, will take the handoff. Shaw exploding forward to the 40-yard line, but a flag came in, and it came from the umpire right towards the line of scrimmage, and usually that means holding against the offense. And there's the initial call. You have to assume Peters Township's gonna accept that penalty, and that's gonna cost Woodland Hills 10 yards. So it'll be second or first and 20. Holding. Offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. So first and 20 for Woodland Hills with the ball set at their own 21 yard line. 348, clock rolling here in the second quarter. Again, Woodland Hills on top by five, 14 to nine. 
Harry Randall with trips to his left, side card to his right, Joel Shaw. One receiver to the far boundary right. Straight drop back. Randall has our Tompkins wide open. 35, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. Cutting into the far sideline. 30 gets a nice block. 20, 15, 10, 5. Into the end zone. He will go unscathed for a touchdown. 79 yard TD pass from Harry Randall to Art Tompkins. Yeah, that had to have been some blown coverage by Peter Township because you really can't leave Art Tompkins open even for a second because. Once he gets his hands on the ball with his speed, he can turn a play just like he did. You know, he caught it 10 yards down the field, but ended up in the end zone. Art Tompkins is just so fast and a great downfield block by Chris David to spring him to that far boundary. And then David, not to be outdone, picked up another one at the two yard line. And the PAT by Cassidy is up and in out of the hold of Harry Randall. And with 3.20 to play in the second quarter, it is Woodland Hills 21 and Peters Township 9. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. 3.20, excuse me, 3 minutes and 20 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Woodland Hills on top of Peters Township 21 to 0. Adam Gusky and Fred Guy on the call for you. And the last score was a 79-yard touchdown pass from Harry Randall to Art Tompkins. Trips to the left of the formation. Nobody covered Art Tompkins. And when he's off to the races, it's tough to catch the junior slot back. Yeah, and good job of Woolen Hills of shaking off two uh, bad plays to start that drive. The uh, personal foul call and then a holding penalty uh, to start the actual drive. Uh, Woolen Hills just shook that off. You know, Randall to Tompkins. And Boom, touchdown. Minjonk on the return for Peters Township. He sprung open for a minute and then was dragged down by Chris David. Minjonk a little slow to get up. And it will be first and 10 for the Peters Township Indians at their own 35 yard line. 314 to go here in the second quarter. And again, Woodland Hills up a dozen. Yeah, good job of Minjok of stepping in after Amager has gotten injured, and I don't think he's going to be back in this game. But uh, Minjok has done a great job offensively uh, carrying the ball, uh, but he's taking some shots in this game. So he's going to feel very sore tomorrow morning. Lone setback behind Owen is Minjok. The fullback will crab from the slot left to the far to the near side right, and it will be Minjok taking the handoff. And converging on him is Jihad Brown and guess who? James Eggleston. Yeah, he, he took the uh, helmet to the midsection by Jihad Brown, and then that slowed him up for James Eggleston to clean up the play. Well, we've seen some great offensive plays today, Fred. But uh, right now, my vote for the State Senator Jay Costa player of the game is leaning towards James Eggleston. Yeah, he seems to be in the backfield every play for Woolen Hills. Um, you know, they're going to see number, you know, uh, Minjog, uh, Owen, they're all going to see 99 in their, in their nightmares tonight. High backfield behind Owen. Tight end to the right of the formation as the handoff will go to Minjog. He'll drive his way forward and then be driven back. Jihad Brown in on the tackle. And at the bottom of the pile, a Kyra McLean. A pickup of about five yards on that play brings up third down and seven. You know, Adam, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's only been one completion by Owen today. Two. Okay. And, and that's just a credit to Willen Hills and their secondary and their linebackers, the, the coverage that they're getting. The one, you know, the one completion was a questionable um, over-the-line call, but, you know, we can't really do anything about that Greg Watts will motion from left to right as the toss to the near side goes to Timothy Swoop. It'll be a forward pass to the 40-yard line, and then Swoop carries it to the 42-yard line. And whistles blow here as I think Woodland Hills asks for a timeout as Peters Township faces a fourth and short. And that's probably a good thing that Woodland Hills did. Woodland Hills, first timeout. So the Wolverines take a break. We will, too, with 1.36 to play in the second quarter. It's Woodland Hills 21, Peters Township 9. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Unmuted on for Peters Township. Woodland Hills up by 12, 21 to 9. The Indians facing a fourth down 
and three at the Woodland Hills 42-yard line. Snap high. It'll sail over the head of Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg retreating. He will be hit once. Eludes the first Wolverine and then uh, two other Wolverines. One of them, James Eggleston. The other one, Deshaun Osbrook, makes the tackle at the 20-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for the Wolverines just inside of the Peters Township red zone. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get away from your leading tackler, and Deshaun Osbrook, and one of your biggest playmakers on defense in James Eggleston. A loss of 42 yards on the errant snap or excuse me, a loss of 22 yards on the air and snap from the 42 to the 20. And Wilden Hills used that timeout very smartly because they have the ball deep inside of Indians territory. Kind of iced the uh, snapper on that one. Harry Randall with sidecars to either side, 128 to go here, so hand off to Art Tompkins. Has a hole as he'll spring into the 20, across the 15, 10, 5, end zone, touchdown, Art Tompkins. That's an excellent kick out block by Joel Shaw because he, once Joel Shaw got rid of his blocker, Art Tompkins just saw a nice lane into the end zone. And once you give him space, he's going to find it, and he's going to run right into the end zone. So one play after an errant punt snap. The Wolverines take advantage. Second touchdown of the day for our Tompkins. And the PAT by Donald Cassidy is up and in with 120 to play in the second quarter. It's Woodland Hills 28. And the Peters Township Indians 9. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. A 20-yard touchdown run by Art Tompkins. And the Wolverines are on top 28 to nine over the Peters Township Indians. The Wolverines got the ball after a bad punt snap. Set the Wolverines up inside of the Peters Township red zone and Art Tompkins made it look easy after getting a nice kick out block from Joel Shaw. Yeah, I thought that was a better block initially than I saw it looked like the as Joel Shaw was going to his blocker or to his uh, defender, he kind of fell down. But even still, uh, great patience of Art Tompkins to just follow his block and get himself in the end zone. Strong kick by Donald Cassidy on the return will be Michael Ehrenberg for Peters Township. And Ehrenberg with a 22-yard return. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Indians at their own 30 with 115 to play. You know, I'm really surprised coming off an injury that uh, Harry Randall is actually, I've seen him all over the field today, punt return, kickoff team. He's now playing safety. He's playing free safety First for the defense, you know, the along with quarterback. You know, I'm really surprised that you know, Coach Novak's using him in a variety of ways. And the handoff will go to Minjock, and Minjock with a pickup of one to the 31-yard line, and it's second down and nine, and boy, did Minjock get hit hard as he crossed the line of scrimmage. You know, you got to give him a lot of credit because he is taking a lot of shots, but he keeps getting up and getting back into the huddle. You know, I've seen him take a couple of woozy steps during the game, but, man, the heart of this kid is phenomenal. Second and nine. Indians. 43 seconds and counting here in the second quarter. Woodland Hills on top by 19 points. Owen under center. High backfield behind him. The handoff will go to the fullback who just came into the football game. Nicholas, to Nicholas Ray. Ray lowers his shoulders. And Ray is brought down at the line of scrimmage. The shot Osbrooks amongst others in on the tackle. And a pickup of two there for Ray on his first carry of the affair. And Willen Hills has decided to go to their 4-3 defense, um, I guess, on this series because what Peter Township uh, ran, which you know every fullback loves, is a tackle trap play, and that's what they ran. But Willen Hills did a great job, especially their linebackers, of stepping up and uh, breaking up that play. And that last run by Peters Township was the final play of the first half. Your halftime score, 28 to nine, Woodland Hills on top of Peters Township. And Fred, the Wolverines had a little bit of a rocky start, but they held true, and they have played very well through the first 24 minutes of action. Yeah, that first drive, you know, kind of took everybody by surprise with Peters Township running the ball as well, as effectively as they had. 
But Woodland Hills just stepped up, especially towards the uh, end of that first drive when they only settled for a field goal. Um, the absence of Uppinger kind of helped Woodland Hills because Minjok, as great as he has been uh, in this game, is a little bit slower. doesn't have the vision that Uppinger has. How about Art Tompkins the past two weeks, Fred? He has just been incredible. Over 200 yards total a week ago between special teams receiving and uh, running the football. And today he has a 79-yard reception for a touchdown and a 20-yard rushing TD. Yeah, he's been a tremendous uh, in the apps. He's actually playing for Miles Sanders, who's injured this week. And he's just doing a great job of filling in and just taking advantage of the opportunities he's been given all season long. James Eggleston, another Wolverine who is really coming out to play this evening on senior night. Eggleston is in the backfield on virtually every play. Yeah, he's just, you know, he's a man among boys right now because he's just blowing through every offensive line, every uh, blocking scheme that Peters Township comes up with. He seems to be taking advantage of it. Again, your halftime score, Woodland Hills on top of Peters Township, 28 to 9. Folks on the television side, we will be right back with the Woodland Hills Football Network halftime show. Our folks on the TV side will be back with the second half. On the radio side, we'll be back with the Woodland Hills Football Network halftime show. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Indians all across the Woodland Hills Football Network. Once again, hang around to the end of the game where the Marching Band and Image Visual Ensemble will present this year's program. We welcome you back as well as we get set to begin the second half here at the Wolverine. 28 to 9 is your halftime score. Woodland Hills leading Peters Township here in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. Adam Gusky and Fred Guy on the call for you. And Fred, some impressive numbers for Woodland Hills in the first half. Team total passing, two of three for 103 yards and two touchdowns. Not too bad from Jeremiah Jones and Harry Randall. No, you're right, Adam. They're doing a great job. I mean, they're just picking up uh, big plays in bunches right now. I mean, two, you know, two completions over 100 yards, just finding ways to uh, get the ball down the field. End over end kick will carry over Chris David's head and into the end zone for a touchback. And Woodland Hills will start the second half with the football at their own 20 yard line. It looked like a little miscommunication on that play between uh, Chris David and Harry Randall. Harry looked like he had a beat on it. Chris thought he had one, but either were correct. Either were, both were incorrect because the ball ended up in the end zone and Woodland Hills is starting at their own 20 yard line. Again, it'll be first down and 10 for the Wolverines with the ball at their own 20-yard line. Wolverines out of the huddle. The quarterback is Harry Randall. He has quarterbacked all but one drive thus far today for Woodland Hills. Jeremiah Jones ran one touchdown drive for the Black and Turquoise. Two receivers to the left of the formation. Handoff will go to Art Tompkins, who has three TDs on the day. He will dance his way forward for a pickup of seven yards to the 27-yard line, and it is second down and three for the Wolverines. Yeah, I thought, here, I thought uh, Art Tompkins was going to pick up a little bit more than just that seven yards because he had a burst of speed coming through the offensive line. Art Tompkins, five carries, 53 yards, two rushing touchdowns. And like we said, he had a 79-yard receiving touchdown in that first half as well. Three TDs today for Art Tompkins. Second and three, Wolverines. And Tompkins has done a great job coming in in the absence of Miles Sanders. Two receivers to the left of the formation. Joel Shaw, a slot to the near side left as well. Hard count by Randall, who's in the pistol with Tompkins behind him. Randall, off of play action, steps up into the pocket, has a receiver open, and Joel Shaw, 45, still on his feet inside of Peters Township territory, and he will be brought down at the Peters Township 47-yard line. And a nice pickup there for the big fullback who was lined up at the slot that time. It looks like Willen Hills ran that reverse pivot waggle pass again, which they, they were very successful with last week. And, um, Jeremiah Jones ran it a couple of times, and uh, Harry Randall's starting to get into the mix now. He, he just threw a nice strike to Joel Shaw, who surprisingly for a big guy who can rumble, he's got some uh, gentle hands. Two completions for 105 yards today for Harry Randall. Hard count, he'll hand off to Art Tompkins. Bouncing to the near side now, cuts it back, leaps over an Indian, and he will be brought down after a nine-yard pickup. Our Tompkins just keeps finding Indians. ways to make people miss him in open space, whether it be leaping over a defender, 
uh, running around a defender. He's just doing a great job right now of uh, making people miss in open spaces. Second down and one for Woodland Hills as Art Tompkins now has 62 yards rushing. Near the 38 yard line of Peters Township. Randall in the pistol. With Art Tompkins behind him, high snap. Randall's going to keep it himself, bouncing it to the outside. He'll push his way forward close to the first down marker before being dragged down by Timothy Swoop. Randall on the keep, tackled by Timothy Swoop of the Indians. And the official will take a look at the flag, and he'll say it's third and very short, just shy of a one-yard gain for Harry Randall. I'm really shocked that they didn't call first down. Uh, from the spot, it looked like it looked like Harry Randall picked it. Up. Looked like Harry Randall picked it up, but uh, official said he didn't. Harry Randall in the pistol with Art Tompkins behind him. Shaw will motion from right to left. Hand off. Tompkins. He has enough for the first down. An ankle tackle from behind by Richard Rao came in late. A pickup. On the play forward, of about two and a half yards for Art Tompkins, and it's first and ten for the Wolverines. Yeah, I never noticed this until just this play, but uh, Peters Township's middle linebacker has to be one of the smallest that I think I've ever seen in quad A football. Uh, number 34, Richard Griffith Jr., stands 5'8", 180 pounds, but he looks very, very tiny compared to his uh, defensive line and other linebackers. Pistol formation again with Tompkins behind Randall. Randall off of play action. Waggles to the right, steps up into the pocket, looks down the middle. Second touchdown pass of the day from Randall to Trayvon Mathis. Randall finds Trayvon Mathis. Again, Waggle has, has been a big play for Woodland Hills at, during this season, especially during the latter part of this season. An injured Peters Township Indian back here at the 42-yard line. But uh, as we take a look at this television replay, Harry Randall, off of play action, stepped up into the pocket, threw a beautiful pass over the defensive back in Marshall McClure and Trayvon Mathis on the reception. And Adam, as I was looking, it looks like they're taking the couple of uh, Woodland Hills players carry Trayvon Mathis off of the field and wasn't sure if he might have twisted his ankle as he was sliding down to the turf. After his, cut, after his touchdown catch. Yeah, I didn't actually see that. But uh, the official, or excuse me, the uh, Peters Township Indians still down. Let's take one more look at this replay. As Harry Randall had all day stepped up into the pocket and threw an absolutely gorgeous pass straight down the middle to Trayvon Mathis. And let's take a look and see if Mathis twisted himself up. Yeah, he lost his balance there. And that left foot skidded across. Third official surface in that end zone, and uh, you can see the ankle rolled over a little bit as well. And let's hope it's nothing too, too serious and something that Mathis may be able to walk off. 34 to 9 is your score right now with 8.26 to play in the third quarter. Cassidy on to attempt the PAT. Nice snap, good hold. Kick up, and that kick is good. And with eight minutes and 26 seconds to go in the third quarter, it is Woodland Hills 35 and Peters Township 9. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Indians on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. A 36-yard touchdown pass from Harry Randall to Trayvon Mathis. PAT by Donald Cassidy, and it's 35 to nine. Woodland Hills leading Peters Township with 8.26 to play in the third quarter at the Wolverine. And what's really impressive about him is that Woodland Hills has three touchdown passes today. Usually, I mean, they're, they're pretty much known for their ground game, but they're doing it through the air today. Second touchdown reception in the evening for Trayvon Mathis and the second touchdown pass for Harry Randall. Trayvon Mathis incidentally back into the lineup on the kick coverage team. A short kick by Donald Cassidy. Cody Sheets will be on the return for Peters Township. He'll surge forward to the 35-yard line before being driven back. And it'll be Cassidy first down and 10 for the Indians from that 35. Yeah, whatever happened to Trayvon Mathis, 
Must have not affected him on the last play because he was able to get out there for kick coverage, which, you know, like we say, these guys are athletes. I mean, we find them on offense, defense, special teams, and, you know, not that they're, not that they're needed. I think they just want to be out there uh, for, every, for basically every play. High backfield behind Owen. Woodland Hill shows blitz. Handoff. We'll go to, oh, there's a, a little bit of uh, extracurriculars after the play. And who is the ball carrier? It's number 15, I believe. Yes, it was. Uh, TJ Capan. Capan, the 5'10 freshman. The third tailback we've seen today for Peters Township. And Fred, there was a... Uh, a little bit of an altercation after that play. At number 65, who's actually not on the Bethel Park roster, seemed to have been pushing people or trying to push people around towards the end of that play. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. Throw to the near side. It's complete to Timothy Swoop. Swoop carries the ball across the 40 to the 44-yard line, a nine-yard completion from Swoop Owen to Swoop. Third catch of the day for Michael Swoop. The Swoop now with three catches for 41 yards. Yeah, you can tell there's a difference in these quarterbacks, for, cornerbacks for Woodland Hills. Uh, Trayvon Mathis, Chris David, they like to press in your face. Uh, number 21, Mike Nash, he gives, he gives a little bit of cushion, uh, which on that last play kind of hurt Woodland Hills. I backfield behind Owen. He will hand off to TJ Capan, and Capan surges forward, picks up just about a yard. And that will be enough for the Peters Township first down. Yeah, the one thing I've noticed over the past couple of years, Adam, is that the officials really don't uh, call for the change much, um, you know, on close calls. They use their, I guess, their judgment in, uh, in calling for these first downs. Owen under center. Slip screen to the far side for Timothy Swoop, and Swoop again picking up positive yardage. This time Swoop lined up at the slot spot, and he will pick up 11 yards into Woodland Hills territory before being brought down by Deshaun Osbrook. Yeah, I don't think Woodland Hills' defense was set on that last play because uh, Peters Township just came to the offensive line pretty quick, got set, and then as uh, the ball was being snapped, one of the uh, cornerbacks or safeties for Woodland Hills was getting over to Swoop uh, to get him covered. First down and 10 for Peters Township. Two receivers to the near side right, one to the far boundary left as Owen steps under center. He'll hand off to Capan. Capan Fumble. loses the football. Woodland Hills will pick it up. Running with it is Jahan Brown. Brown down the near sideline. Will finally be forced out of bounds inside of the 35 at the 33 yard line. And, and Dej Dej or, uh, rather Jahan Brown with a big time fumble recovery. Here's the one thing I seen on that last play. Deshaun Osbrooks actually lined up at an outside linebacker position, saw that the run was coming his way and just put his helmet right on the ball. Jordan it loose, he had a freshman running back, Coughed it up, Jihad Brown picked it up and started rumbling. I thought he was going to go to the, to, you know, I thought he was going to take it to the house on that play, but uh, Peters Township was able to catch up to him and uh, get him out of bounds. So Willem Hills with the football at the Peters Township 33 yard line with 5.57 to play in the third quarter. Wolverines out of the huddle. Randall, the quarterback, the tailback is. Art Tompkins. Tompkins will take the handoff, trying to bounce it to the outside. And the Wolverines going to be guilty of a block in the back as Trevon Mathis ran into Connor Kachowski from behind. That'll be a pickup of one initially for Tompkins, or maybe two, but this is going to push the Wolverines back. And we'll see where they enforce this penalty from what spot. Illegal block, offense, replay first down. So legal block in the back against the Wolverines. We'll push them back to the 
four-yard line. So they're going to say that illegal block actually happened one yard deep in the backfield and ends up costing the Wolverines 11 yards. And it's first and 21 at the Peters 44. Woodland Hills dropping back to pass is Randall rolling left. Now rolling back to his right. He'll throw it down that far sideline, and it is caught at the one-yard line. And into the end zone goes Jamond Dunn, the sophomore receiver. Dunn found himself open at the one-yard line. Watch that football fall into his arms, and he will step inside of the pylon for Harry Randall's third touchdown pass of the game. Great presence of mind of Dunn to uh, as he was coming close to the sideline to one, catch the ball, and two, catch it in bounds. And then once he caught the ball, knew he was in bounds, stutter stepped right, right inside the pylon for the touchdown. 41 to nine is the score. Make it 42 to nine as the PAT is up and in by Donald Cassidy. And with 5.37 to play in the third quarter, the Wolverines lead the Indians by 33 points. You're tuned into the Wolverines and the Indians all across the Woodland Hills Football Network. Folks, as always, you can tune into the Wolverines and the Woodland Hills Football Network on the radio. It's AM 1550 WZUM. On TV, it's Monroeville Comcast Channel 13. Pass of the game for Harry Randall. This time he finds reserve sophomore receiver Jamond Dunn at the one yard line. And Dunn caught it at the one, stepped inside of the pylon with a 44 yard touchdown. Harry Randall today is a perfect four of four for 185 yards and three touchdowns. Not a bad outing after coming off of a high ankle sprain that cost him a week ago. End over end kick by Cassidy will carry inside of the 10 to the seven yard line where it will be returned by Richard Rao. And Rao will be brought down as he crosses the 30 yard line by Trayvon Mathis. And 5.30 to play in the third quarter. Woodland Hills right now up by 33 points. Yeah, this has been an impressive aerial display by Woodland Hills from both quarterbacks, Jeremiah Jones and uh, Harry Randall. But Harry Randall has just you know, I was really surprised that he was able to um, make a couple people miss, um, find, was able to get his feet set and find Dunn, who was absolutely by himself. There wasn't a defender within 15 yards of him when Harry Randall threw that ball. And the handoff will go to TJ Capan, and Capan is brought down at the line of scrimmage Kapan by Deshaun Osbrooks. Also in on the tackle for the Wolverines is Devin Nixon. I haven't seen much of James Eggleston here in the second half, Fred, but he was a beast in the first half. Yeah, I prob you probably won't. I mean, this game's pretty much in hand right now. James Eggleston has just caused absolute fits for the offensive line of Peters Township. And the one person that, you know, I haven't seen for Peters Township is Minja. Owen under center with an eye backfield behind him. And off to Capan, he lost the football. And there's a scrum for it, it's still loose. And Peters Township, I think, fell on top of it at the 36 yard line. But that's the second fumble of the day for Capan. And this time it's recovered by Peters. I believe that's his second fumble in his last three carries. I believe you are correct. And this time the fumble actually picks up six yards for Peters. Pass to the near side, complete to Timothy Swoop. And Swoop is brought down as he crosses the 45 to the 46 yard line, a pickup of 10 for Swoop. And Swoop now with five catches for 62 yards. Swoop has been an effective weapon for Peters Township in the second half. You know, with a couple catches, keeps the chains moving. Um, you know, I mean, I understand you're down by 33, but if you know anything you can do to keep the ball moving, keep the chains, chains rolling, is going to be a good thing for you. 
Back to pass is Owen. He'll look to his left, and the pass intended for Ehrenberg is dropped. And that brings up second down and 10 for the Indians. And that is the first incompletion in the last five passing attempts for Peters Township. Yeah, Owen's done a great job of trying to keep his team into it, but that last pass was throwing a little, uh, it was thrown at the feet of Ehrenberg. Um, you know, in that situation, you want to try to get that ball at least waist to chest high to ha so your receiver can make a play on it. Back to pass is Owen. He'll look to his left, looking for swoop incomplete. And two straight That's incompletions for Peters Timothy Township. Swoop, and it's third down and 10 for the Indians. Yeah, and both were not really good passes by Owen. And, third and you know, the one thing that Peters Township has going for them is that most of their passing game is based out of a three-step drop. Um, not too often that I've seen Owen take a five-step or even a seven-step drop. So you know, everything is pretty much you know, bang, bang. And, you got to release the ball and make sure that ball is in a good position for your wide receivers to make a, a catch. Owen under center. Straight drop back. Looks to his left. Hit as he releases the football. Looking for Ehrenberg. The pass is behind him. David pass on the coverage. But boy, Owen did complete. Owen get hit hard as he released that football. Coverage by Chris yeah, I was wondering why Owen three. was standing around the 30-yard line when the ball was placed at the uh, Peters Township 30. I'm sorry. 46-yard line. Well, I think that was because he got hit in the chest by and two Woodland Hills one. defensive linemen. Art Tompkins back Tompkins deep to return the punt Ehrenberg. from Michael Ehrenberg. 341 as the clock is stopped here in the third quarter. Woodland Hills up by 33 points. A knuckling punt will carry to the near sideline out of bounds. And let's see where the official spots this football. And it will be at the Woodland Hills 35-yard line. Aaron so Woodland Hills 30, the first and 10 at their own 35, 65 yards away from sending this game into the modified timekeeping system. Folks, as always, you can listen to tonight's game anytime by logging on. To 3.37 to play in the first quarter. Adam Gusky, Fred Guy on the call for you. And Fred, this Woodland Hills football team is just absolutely rolling. You know, they lost that game to McKeesport. They had a rocky start to the game against Bethel Park, but once the second half of that game against Bethel Park hit, Woodland Hills has been clicking virtually on all cylinders. They had a little bit of a struggle against Baldwin and maybe their first two drives of this football game. But other than that, the Wolverines have just been spectacular. Yeah, they've, I mean, they're doing it in all facets of the game, offense, defense, special teams. And what's really impressive is the aerial attack of Woodland Hills and what they've been doing in the air. A pass complete from Jeremiah Jones. Jones As he looks down the middle, he will find Jamon Dunn. And Dunn carries the ball inside of the Peters Township 40-yard line to the 38-yard line. And Jeremiah Jones is now two of three on the day for 51 yards and a touchdown. And Jamon Dunn, the sophomore reserve receiver, now has 71 yards on two catches. Pistol formation. Jones will hand off. And it is Nigel Henderson juking inside of the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 15. And he will be brought down at the 13-yard line. And Fred Woodland Hills, third string running back, could play pretty much for any other team. Did you see those moves by Nigel Henderson? I did. Peters Township left some laundry on the field on that last play because Nigel Henderson was just making people miss time after time. I mean, he just, the, the shoulders and the hips just got people like just misdirected and he just took the ball around the left side and <laughs> wow, I, I'm really speechless right now what I just saw. Those were some incredible moves by Nigel Henderson, a 26 yard pickup and on first down and 10, at the Peters Township 12-yard line, Donald Cassidy will come on to attempt a 29-yard field goal. The holder this time will be Chris David. And the long snapper is Steven Record. Record has been the long snapper since the injury to Rooney earlier in the season. Good snap, nice hold. And that kick is up. And that kick is no good wide left. And Donald Cassidy has Cassidy missed his last three field goal attempts, Fred. 
two last week and one this week. And all three of them have come on first down situations. Yeah, especially, I mean, knowing that special teams are such an important part going into the playoffs, uh, you know, Coach Novak's trying to get his kicker some, some, some time to, you know, get some real game situations. But he has not really stepped up in these last three kicks. And that one I actually thought was kind of close, but, you know, the uh, referee said no good. Swoop paying the price after catching the football on a timing pattern, and he will be helped up by Deshaun Osbrooks, who was one of three Wolverines who made the tackle. And, Fred, the Wolverines are laying the lumber tonight like we haven't seen them done do all season. Yeah, they've, they've gone in well pretty deep into the uh, – depth chart of Peters Township, especially a running back, you know, one shoulder injury. I hate to speculate, but I think Minjok might have a concussion. Um, and now they're on their third street tailback, who's fumbled twice already today. TJ Kapan is the tailback, and Owen will look down that far sideline for Michael Ehrenberg. And Ehrenberg leaped up and had his hands on the football, but could not come down with it. On the coverage, Trevon Bryant for the Wolverines. Yeah, I thought Trevon Bryant was going to run past uh, Ehrenberg on that last play. Ehrenberg just stopped, thought he could high point the ball, but was unable to bring it down. Third and five for Peters Township at their own 25-yard line. 134, clock stopped here in the third quarter. Woodland Hills up by 33 points. Owen in the shotgun with Capan to his right. Owen on the quarterback, draw. He'll pick up the first down as he jukes to shot Osbrooks. Now he'll retreat to the far sideline, goes Owen, and Owen finally stepping on the far sideline as knocking his legs out of bounds was Malik Flowers. And that's the second time we've seen Malik Flowers come up and make a touchdown saving play. And an Indian is shaken up deep in the backfield. A nice pickup though for Peters Township on that 18-yard run by Owen. And we knew Owen was a dual-threat quarterback coming in, but Willen Hills has done a great job in terms of limiting his passing, uh, you know, his what he's able to achieve in passing. And running-wise, he really hasn't been that successful either. And the Indian is still down at the 20-yard line with 1.23 to play in the third quarter. And we'll take an opportunity to take a break as well. The score, 42-9, to Woodland Hills leading Peters Township. You're tuning into the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills leads Peters Township by 42-9, to a 33-point advantage. Most recent play for the Indians was an 18-yard run by the quarterback, Owen. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. Here. All right, Peters Township guilty of an unsportsmanlike conduct. And Fred, you know, I saw the injured Peters Township Indian laying on the ground, and I saw Rich Piccanini yelling, and I assumed that he was, you know, upset with the official about Dead something ball, that went on. Uh, I, I, and I assumed that he was yelling at the official for something that went on, but apparently. It got to the point where the official decided to throw the flag, and that's the second time this season where we have seen a Woodland Hills oppose, uh, uh, an opposing coach that Woodland Hills has been playing against first receive a penalty. Yeah, and first time was against Bethel Park, now against Peter Township. You know, any time that you get into a heat of a battle, I've, I've know this because I've coached high school sports before, if you by any chance want to use a cuss word, um, the, the referees are going to flag you for it. Owen pressured as the Wolverines on a delayed blitz. Ball hits the turf incomplete. And that brings up second down and 10 for the Indians back at their own 27 yard line. And it looks like that de delayed blitz was brought by Deshaun Osbrooks. Once again, he seems to find holes uh, in the offensive line and gets himself through and darted through. Got uh, Owens on the run. And, you know, fortunately for Owens, that ball was thrown a little short because there was a Wolverine defender in the area. And folks on the radio side, you may be wondering why I said second down and 10. It is second and 10 because it was a dead ball foul. And with a dead ball foul after the play is over, it uh, moves the ball back 15 yards, but it doesn't cost Peters Township 
yardage within the set of downs. So the ball carrier this time, Capan, is brought down at the line of scrimmage for no gain, and it's third down and 10 for Peters Township at their own 27. Hey, good news for Peters Township, the injured Indian uh, a couple plays ago, number 65, who we don't have on our roster, is back in the game. 30 seconds to play here in the third quarter. And the clock is winding. And the Hill's up by 33 points. Peters Township out of the huddle. Owen steps under center with an eye backfield behind him. Capan dots the eye. Owen straight drop back. Pumps to his left. Little pump and go down that far boundary. And it will be bobbled and then dropped by Michael Ehrenberg. Two Wolverines back there on the coverage. And I think it was Trevon Bryan again on the coverage for Woodland Hills. For Woodland Hills. And it's fourth down and 10. Yeah, good job of Woolen Hills, especially Brian, of not biting on the pump. And he had safety help over top. So um, even if he were to get a step on him, it looked like he had a safety in his face. Yeah, Jihad Brown was coming back to help out. But Bryant made the play. A low kick that will bounce into the awaiting arms of Art Tompkins at his own 31-yard line. To the 35, he'll retreat, bring it back to the near side. Leaps over at Peters Township Indian, and Art Tompkins will be finally be brought will finally be brought down at the 45-yard line. First and 10 for Woodland Hills, and Fred, that's one of the prettiest 14-yard returns you'll ever see. Yeah, he. I probably should have been tackled around the 35-yard uh, line of Woodland Hills, but he was able to make at least four Indians miss. Little dosy do turnaround. Cut it upfield, was surrounded by four Indians and made at least three of them miss. That was the final play of the fourth, third quarter. And we will head to the fourth frame with Woodland Hills on top 42 to nine over Peters Township. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. The 42 to nine, Woodland Hills on top of Peters Township as we are set to begin the fourth quarter here in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. Jeremiah Jones, the quarterback for Woodland Hills. He will hand off, and that is Nigel Henderson, the ball carrier, who got back to the line of scrimmage before being driven back. Nigel Henderson, the ball carrier, gets no yards there. Nigel Henderson, who carries 26 yards today, and a nice touchdown run a week ago. Well, actually, after some consideration, move Henderson back one yard to the 25. And Willen Hills is bringing in a lot of their second team offensive line and wide receivers and running backs. Handoff will go to Asan Ghanem. And Ganem is brought down as he crosses the 45 to the 49-yard line, a five-yard pickup for Ghanem. He usually lines up as an H-back, and that may be his first carry of the season. Not 100% sure. I was just thinking about that, Adam. He did a great job of just getting himself, finding a little hole that he burst through and picked up some decent yardage on second down. And I think Woodland Hills is going to ask for a timeout. Timeout, Woodland Hills. And they do. And Woodland Hills is up by 33 points with 10.48 to play in regulation. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Two to nine. Off of play action goes Jeremiah Jones. Runs to the far side. Looks to that far boundary, and he will find Michael Smith for the Woodland Hills first down. Jeremiah Jones, Smith, the senior tight end with a nice Michael catch. Yeah, again, Woodland Hills has just been really successful with this reverse pivot uh, waggle play because it throws at least five receivers the into, the, into the field, and especially with the you have your fullback coming out, a five and out, and then you have your tight end dragging across the field. And Willen Hills has just been successful of hitting Wolverine fullback, tight end, and wide receiver throughout the course of this game. 11 yard pickup for number 11, Mike Smith. 62 yards in the air today for Jeremiah Jones. Jones, the quarterback, and the shotgun sidecars to either side. High snap, and 
Whistles blown. I think Woodland Hills may use a timeout here. Again. Timeout. Woodland Hills. The Wolverines use the timeout with 10-16 to play in the fourth quarter. It's 42-9, Woodland Hills leading Peters Township. You're tuned in to the Wolverines and the Indians on MSA Sports and the Woodland Hills Football Network. 10-16 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jeremiah Jones will hand off. And the ball carrier brought down one yard deep in the backfield. I believe it was Nigel Henderson, the ball carrier. Nigel Henderson, the ball carrier. On the and play. Henderson down with his third of carry of the game. He has 24 yards today. After having a butt on his first carry. Second down and 11 for Woodland Hills with the ball at the Peters Second Township 41-yard line. Clock winding down towards 9 minutes and 45 seconds to go here. Woodland Hills up by 33 points. And by all accounts, the Wolverines will be 6-1 and one in the SEC at the end of this game. Jones in the shotgun. Draw a handoff. Nigel Henderson springing loose to the near side. And he will be brought down inside of the 35 to the 34-yard line. The ball carrier on the play. And a nifty seven-yard run forward. for Nigel Henderson. And hey. boy, is he elusive. Hey, Adam, I actually wanted to pass along. Uh, Willen Hills lost a member of their coaching community. Uh, this past week, Coach uh, Bill Pu Pu excuse me, Purefoy, who coached oh. in 1994. Right. I was a senior that year. Uh, he passed away this uh, past week. Um, he was also a, uh, a chief of the Homestead Volunteer Fire Department, so I want to pass along my condolences to his family as well. I'm sorry to hear that. I did like Coach Purefoy a lot. Hard count. Movement on both sides. The officials don't blow the whistle against either team as his son, Gonham, takes the handoff, and he will be brought down for a loss of two. Second carry of the game, and Gonham now has two carries for three yards. And Woodland Hill's going to bring out their punt unit. Steven Rickard, the long snapper. Our Tompkins will boot it away for the second time today. Back deep to return, Richard Rowell. Nice snap, quick kick by Tompkins, takes a Woodland Hills bounce. Rowell will catch it at his own 10, where he'll be hit by Rickard. Also in on the tackle for the Wolverines is Jordan Lee, but it was Rickard who got most of the tackle. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Indians with the ball actually at the 12. And that was actually a smart play by Raul because if he had let that ball go, as many Wolverines that were converging on him, that ball probably would have been inside the five yard line because it had, it had the momentum going that way. Um, but good job of Raul of being aware of his surroundings and uh, the Wolverines in front of him. I backfield. with T.J. Capan dotting the eye. The pass to the near side, complete to Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg, his second Passes catch of the game. To Michael Ehrenberg. Coverage by Pick up on that play of, of 12 yards. And Owen now has 86 yard yards passing. And I don't think if any of his pass plays have been over, uh, with the exception of maybe one, have been over um, 10 yards. Owen pressured as he was retreating, looked to the near side left and threw it into the Peters Township sideline. And the clock stopped with 7.33 to play here in the fourth quarter. And I'm not exactly sure of this rule, but I'm assuming that there is no intentional grounding in high school football? I think basically if the ball goes across the line of scrimmage, it's good enough. I'll check more on that tomorrow. Maybe get back to you next week on the rules. Owen pressured, running to the near side. He'll be wrapped by a pair of Wolverines, a Kyra McLean. The first one to Owen and Dejon Brown comes in and Owen cleans things up. up a loss of McClain. four yards on the play. And that's been the, the issue with Peter Township is that they seem to be okay with the three-step drops. They're not getting any pressure from the 
defensive line or linebackers of Woolen Hills. But once you get into a shotgun or five or seven step drop, Woolen Hill seems to bring a lot of pressure and get Owen out of his rhythm. Devin Nixon and applied the early pressure before McLean and Brown ended up making the play. Back to pass is Owen. He looks to his left, finds Connor Freely. And Freely is brought down just shy of the first down marker. Pass to Connor Freely is and then they'll move the ball up to the 34-yard line, even though he was tackled at the 33. And it will be a first down for Peters Township on a pickup of 14 yards. Just going to shake your head, Adam. Right just going to shake your head. 100 yards in the air now for Owen. As Owen in the shotgun, pumps to his right, steps up into the pocket, and he will be brought down. Laying on the ground was Kevin Solomon. He reached up with his right arm, grabbed Owen, and brought him down just shy of the line of scrimmage. And he was flat on his stomach when he uh, grabbed Owen. That's an impressive play of Solomon of, you know, just being able to use his strength to bring down a quarterback who is six foot two, 195 pounds. And Solomon running a game, got knocked down. And yeah, he was on his way down, was laying on his belly when he grabbed a hold of Owen. Owen rolling to the left now after feeling pressure. He'll throw it down this near sideline for Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg had the ball in his hands, but then dropped it on the coverage for the Wolverines is Jaquan Jones. And the incomplete pass brings up third down and 10. Yeah, Ehrenberg made a nice adjustment on that ball. Just as it was coming into him, he turned from, he was looking into the field, turned around and uh, was, un was unable to keep his hands on the ball as he was coming to the ground. Two receivers to either side. Shotgun formation for Owen. Clock stopped here on third down and 10. Pass to the near side intended for Connor Freely, well behind Freely, and that incomplete pass brings up fourth down and 10 with the ball at the Peters Township 34-yard line, and the punt unit will come on for the Indians. Clock stopped with 5.44 to play in regulation. Woodland Hills up by 33 points. Aaron Berg will punt it away for Peters Township. Back deep to return for the Wolverines. It is Art Tompkins. Tompkins with three touchdowns today, one receiving, two rushing. And the punt will bounce into the hands of Tompkins. It bounced off his face mask, which allowed Peters Township to come up and pressure Tompkins. So he decided to take a knee at the 32-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 for the Wolverines. And that was probably a smart play by Tompkins of just taking the knee. You're up by 33 points. You don't really don't want to risk any injury. Um, you've had a spectacular day. Um, you really don't want to run up, uh, run up a score on an opponent. So... You know, being a little headstrong, he just decided to take a knee and let his offense get on the field. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Wolverines. With the ball at their own 32-yard line. Jake Cassidy is the center. Pistol formation with Henderson behind Jones. Henderson takes the handoff from Jones. Trying to bounce it to the outside. He'll cut through a hole and will be brought down after a pickup of about two yards. And with 5.25 on a rolling clock, the Wolverines face a second down and seven. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see too much uh, aerial performances by uh, Woodland Hills the rest of this game. Pretty much got the game in hand. Uh, kind of just want to run out the clock, the make sure nothing you know significant happens in terms of injuries, and just take this one into the locker room. Right now, Woodland Hills in the air, 247 yards. You see that very often. Handoff will go to Nigel Henderson from Jeremiah Jones. Henderson picks up about a half a yard before being brought down. Henderson, the ball carrier. And it's second down and about seven. Wow. I just saw a Peters Township player completely deck a Woodland Hills offensive lineman, and there was nothing called. But, and, and I know every referee, all what five of them, seen that happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I'm, not actually, I'm not exactly sure why there isn't any penalty flags on the, fl on the uh, turf right now. Yeah, Anthony Hudson Pillar was the victim in the... Actor was Dane Sennert for Peters Township. Off of play action. 
Jeremiah Jones will step up into the pocket. Running to the near side, picks up some blockers in Ghanem and Henderson. And it's a first down for Jeremiah Jones. Jones brought down at the 47-yard line, and an Indian is down well back behind the play. But he will get to his feet. A nice run by Jeremiah Jones from his own 35 to the 48-yard line. Yeah, the injured Indian is number 59. Nicholas White, and Nicholas White's a, a starter at this point. I mean, you know, you really don't want to keep these guys out there too long, especially if, you know, they're getting beat up the way they have been today. The first and 10 for Woodland Hills with the ball at their own 48-yard line. Clock winding down towards 3.45 to go in regulation. Pistol formation with Henderson behind Jones. Two receivers to the far side left, a tight end to the right of the formation. Jones, hands off. Henderson, bouncing it to the outside. Finds a hole as he cuts it across the 50 to the 49-yard line for a gain of three. Nigel, Nigel Henderson, 37 yards rushing today. Henderson with 37 yards on the ground, the second leading rusher for the Wolverines. Leading rusher is Art Tompkins. Tompkins, well, you'd have to assume, is done for the day other than on special teams with seven carries, 64 yards, and two rushing touchdowns to go along with that 79-yard touchdown reception. Pistol formation, Henderson takes the handoff. Springing his way forward as he found a hole at the line of scrimmage, and Henderson inside of the 45 to the 44-yard line. A pickup of five for Henderson. He has 42 yards on the ground. Yeah, Henderson keeps churning out these yards, you know, despite... Peter Township keeping their pretty much their first team offense on the field. Willen Hills' uh, second team offensive line has done a fantastic job um, not letting anybody really get to Jones when he drops back and finding, you know, opening up some nice holes for the second and third team running backs for Willen Hills. Again, the pistol formation, three receivers to the right of that formation. And it'll be a little slip screen. Intended for Isaiah Brooks, incomplete. And that brings up fourth down and three, and the punt unit will come on for the Wolverines. That's the first incompletion for Woodland Hills since the first pass of the game by Jeremiah Jones. Yeah, and Isaiah Brooks, I think, might have heard some footsteps coming because he had actually a couple of yards before anyone was going to get to him. If he had just secured the ball and looked up field, made a couple, maybe at least one person miss, he definitely would have got the first down for sure. So just two incomplete passes today for Woodland Hills and what was likely the uh, first and the last of the game. Punt out of bounds, Tompkins to the far sideline. It'll be first and 10 for Woodland Hills with the ball at the 25 yard line. Again, Woodland Hills up by 33 points. Next up for the Wolverines, the Penn Hills Indians. Rivalry week in the WPIAL as Woodland Hills takes on Penn Hills. Upper St. Clair takes on Mount Lebanon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and really, Woolen Hills just needed one victory to wrap up um, that That's second place. Time off, Peters Township. Take one. That second place uh, seed, and second place in the conference, I should say, seed, Folks, and a, at least the, the, the first uh, playoff game will be held here at the Wolverine. And of course, we will, as always, have the coverage for you from the Wolverina, if that uh, should come to pass, which is very, very likely. And that coverage will start at 7.10 p.m. in the first round of the WPIL playoff. But Fred, uh, the Wolverines have the Penn Hills Indians on rivalry week next Friday night. And uh, you know, it's always a great game when Woodland Hills plays Penn Hills. You throw the records away because the two teams are so close in proximity, they have such history. Yeah, and I think I believe that's the only rivalry team with the exception of maybe Plum that they've played every single year since uh, Willen Hills came into existence. Um, you know, Penn Hills has a dual threat quarterback. Uh, he's definitely a good runner, good passer, has a couple uh, downfield threats and wide receivers. So Willen Hills can't take this team lightly, especially if they want to keep that momentum going into the playoffs. And Peters Township now has a reserve quarterback on the field. As T.J. Capan 
will take the handoff from reserve quarterback Tor Sennert. TJ Capan, the ball carrier. Loss of three on the play for Capan. As the clock winds under two minutes to play. Two minute warning. And Capan now with minus two yards to go along with a pair of fumbles, one lost. On a great evening for the freshman running back. Pitch. Capan running to the near side. He'll be hit and he'll be brought down. There were so many black jerseys down there. It's a team tackle for the Wolverines. A host of black shirts on the defense. At the bottom of the pile for the black and turquoise was Diamond Johnson amongst others. Yeah, Capan is seeing I think we should replay this how this Wolverine defense, even the second team, uh, has come to play because he has taken some hits. I mean, he really has taken some shots in this game. You know, from the first time he carried when he was hit by the shot to Osbrooks and fumbled the ball to two play two carries later, fumbling it again, and he's just been he's taking a beating today. High backfield, moving along the Woodland Hills front. What did he change? Dead ball, false start offense. Third down. <laughs> and the false start against Peters Township costs them five yards back to the 12 yard line. It's third and 22 with under a minute to play. Well, the hills all over that one as Kevin Solomon was deep in the backfield, nearly took the handoff from the quarterback. Instead, it'll be Capan being brought down five yards deep in the backfield, and Capan now with negative nine yards on the ground. 33 seconds to go as the clock is winding here in Turtle Creek. Don't forget next week, Woodland Hills taking on Penn Hills. And as always, we'll have the coverage on the Woodland Hills Football Network starting at 7, 10 p.m. And all coverage will come from our flagship radio station, AM 1550 WZUM. And of course, our television affiliates and our website at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com. Your final score, 42 to nine. Woodland Hills defeats Peters Township here in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania. And Fred, Woodland Hills has made it look elementary since that game against Bethel Park. Yeah, they've just done a great job. I mean, the competition, you know, Baldwin gave them a little bit of a game, uh, but in terms of every other team that they faced, they, they've really done a great job of just uh, rolling through you know they sometimes they start slow sometimes they start fast you know this game in particular they started a little slow with uh Ubinger coming down the field before he took an injury and, uh, but peters township was able to put three points on the board early score on a fake uh or fake punt which kept them in the game but after that play it's pretty much been woodland hills offensively and defensively and special teams and let's talk about that Woodland Hills offense, Fred. Uh, Art Tompkins today, 64 yards rushing, a pair of touchdowns on the ground. He also had a 79-yard receiving touchdown. Yeah, the, the most impressive part of the offense today has been the passing game. You know, you have two different quarterbacks, one throwing for over 100 yards, one almost throwing 100 for 100 yards, uh, four, what, four touchdowns through the air. Um, just an efficient game in terms of passing, and that's something Amazing that Woodland Hills needs to lean on going one, into two, the – uh, you know, going into the end of the season and part of the playoffs because you're going to get teams that are going to shut down your running game. And if you're uh, proficient in the running and passing, you just become a little bit more dangerous. And Fred, you talk about the passing game. Harry Randall today is a perfect uh, 4 of 4 for 185 yards and a pair of touch or three touchdown passes. And we also saw Harry Randall, or excuse me, Jeremiah Jones go uh, 3 of 5 for 62 yards and a touchdown pass. So in total, Woodland Hills is seven of nine for 247 yards and four touchdowns yeah, and, in the air. And, you're, and your second quarterback's only a sophomore. And he throws probably one of the prettiest footballs I've seen in a long time. And he's a pure pocket passer. Uh, it's just going to, I mean, he's just going to do a great, what's going to happen is if anything happens to Randall, which he has been injury prone, um, it's going to, and the offense is going to just go without it skipping a beat. Again, your final score, 42-9, to nine, Woodland Hills defeating Peters Township. The Wolverines are now 6-2 and two on the season and 6-1 and one in the Southeastern Conference. Peters Township falls to 4-4 four and four on the year and 3-4 four, er, and four in the SEC. I want to thank our television crew, regardless of our technical issues. Uh, of course, Larry George III, our director and executive producer. Our broadcast engineer and technical director is Lee Schaefer, Jr. 
Our camera operators today, Lee Schaefer Jr., Lee Schaefer III, Joe Slick, and Dan McLean. And, of course, I'm Adam Gusky alongside of Fred Guy and our PA announcer here at the Wolverine, as always, Matt Rodriguez. One more time, your final score, Woodland Hills defeats the Peters Township Indians 42-9. Next week, the Wolverines travel to Penn Hills to take on the Indians. Kickoff is at 7.30 p.m., and as always, our coverage starts at 7.10 p.m. all across the Woodland Hills Football Network. Folks on the TV side, we'll talk to you next week. On the radio side, we will be back with the State Senator Jay Costa post-game show. You've been tuned in to the Wolverines and the Indians on the Woodland Hills Football Network.